A viewer reached out to me recently with a question about calculating business days or working days in Power Apps. It presented an interesting challenge, and I took a stab at trying to solve this for them. In this video, we'll look at how to make working with working days in Power Apps as easy as possible. Channel members have access to download the apps used in the videos, as well as the YAML code used in the components that I showcase. You can click the join button below the video if you're interested in supporting the channel. In their email to me, they asked me three main things. How do I find the first working day of the month? How do I find the last working day of the month? And how can I add working days to a date while ignoring weekends and public holidays? If you've ever tried this in Power Apps, you already know that there's not a built-in business day function. There are some ways of calculating this on the internet already, but those often involve storing the year's dates in a table and doing the retrieval and filtering of that in your app. I wanted to store as little data as possible, and by doing so, we ended up with some pretty cool techniques. Before we jump into the formulas, I wanted to show the mental model that I use for all three of these questions. Every solution today is built on the same idea. First, we generate a temporary list of dates, and from that, we then filter out weekends and public holidays. Then we want to return the desired date, either the first, the last, or the nth date. The only data stored in this app is going to be a collection of holidays that contains a single column called holiday date. This could easily come from a SharePoint list or from a Dataverse table, but the important thing here is that we're only storing the public holiday dates, which could vary by country. We're not storing every single working day of the year. We'll handle that inside of our formula. We're going to leverage user-defined functions in these formulas, so we'll head over to App Formulas. We'll create a new formula called FX First Working Day, and we want to add an input parameter to this, which we'll call selected date. This will be a date type, and we then want to return a date to whatever control calls this function. Inside our with function, we'll start by creating a table of 31 numbers using the sequence function. The most days a month can ever have is 31, and any months that have less than 31 days will ignore the extra days in our function. To our sequence function, we'll use the add columns function to add a new column called work date. The value of this column will be the result of the date add function, where we'll need to input a formula that finds the first actual day of the month. And oddly enough, we can use the end of month function for this. End of month finds the ending date of the month, and so we'll input our selected date input parameter. You might be questioning why we're using the end of month function to find the beginning of the month, and the reason is that our second parameter in this function can be used to add or subtract months to your input date. We'll want to enter a negative one for this, and then to the resulting date from our end of month function, we'll add one day. So essentially we're finding the end of the previous month and then adding one day to find the beginning of the month that we're actually looking for. For the second parameter of our date add function, we need to enter value minus one. This adds a column of real dates with the sequence numbers in the table. So each number in the sequence has an associated date. We'll close our add columns function, and now we get to the meat of our formula. First, we need to filter our table by the dates that are not on a weekend. We'll add a filter function around add columns, and for the first parameter, we'll enter the weekday function. We want to return the day of the week's number for the work date column that we just created, and we'll set the first day of the week as Monday. To get non weekend days, we want to filter by any number less than or equal to 5. If Monday is day 1, then Saturday and Sunday would be days 6 and 7. We'll circle back later in the video so I can show you how to define your own working days in case you have different working days that would include Saturday and Sunday. Next, we'll add a second argument to our filter to filter to dates that are not holidays. We can do this by using the isBlank function to check if the result of looking up to our collection of holidays where the holiday date is equal to work date is blank. This will remove any dates that match our holiday dates collection. After this, we'll wrap our filter function with the first function, and we want to return the work date column and that will give us the first working day of the month. Finding the last working day of the month is very easy now that we have the first working day formula. 
I'll copy that entire formula and paste it below. We'll change the name of the formula to fx last working day. There are two changes we need to make to our code to make this work, and they both take place in our date add function. The first is that in our end of month function, we truly need to find the last day of the input date's month. So we'll change negative one to zero, and we'll remove the plus one after end of month. This will find the real end of the month for the selected date. After that, we need to make our date add function subtract days from the end of the month. So we'll wrap value minus one in parenthesis and enter a dash to make the resulting value negative. We're doing this because rather than starting at the beginning of the month and counting up, we're starting at the end of the month and counting backwards. It's the same pattern, just in a different direction. Now to answer our third and final question, we need to make a function to add working days to a selected date. We'll make a copy of our last working date function and create a new one called fx add working days. Just to start, we'll add a number input parameter here for days to add. This will be how many working days we want to add to our input date. Now in our sequence function, we need to add our new input parameter to 31 because we need to generate at least that many days in our sequence. In our date add function, we just want to add our selected date together with the value column. We're just associating dates with our sequence table, similar to the previous two examples. We're not doing any calculations here because we're not trying to find the beginning or end of the month. Now we need to add our first end function before our filter function in our formula. And we need this to return the first number of days equal to our days to add parameter. Finally, we'll change our original first function to a last function, as that will return the ending date needed. I've gone ahead and added some comments so you can see just what's going on with each formula in case you're replicating this in your own app. Let's try to put these into practice now. I have an example set of controls on the screen where we just have the first working day, the last working day, and a spot to add working days to. For our first working day, we'll call our first working day function, and for the selected date, we'll put in our date picker for the first working day. Our date is blank, so it's returning the first working day from the earliest possible date, but we'll go ahead and select our date and we can see that our first working day is January 2nd, 2026. That is, again, because we have our collection being built on start of public holidays, and January 1st is listed as a public holiday. Now let's choose a month that has a weekend date as the first day of the month. In this case, February has Sunday the 1st, so we'll just select a date in February, and we can see that February the 2nd is the actual first working day. We'll go to a month that has the first as the actual first working day, April in this case, and April 1st shows as the first working day. We'll go down to our last working day, and again we'll call our last working day function. We'll use our selected date from our date picker, and we can select a date to see what the last working day of this month is. In this case, the 30th for the month of January, since the 31st is a Saturday. We'll choose one here where the 31st is a Tuesday, and we can see that the 31st is the last working day of the month. Now for our add working days to function, we'll call that in our last text box here. For the selected date, we'll enter our add working days date picker. And then for our days to add, we'll add our number input value. So we'll select a date to add days to, and in this case, we'll just choose December 31st and we'll add one day to this. We can see by adding one working day, it's returning January 2nd as the result. And that's because the day after December 31st is a public holiday. If we raise this to two, we can see that because the second is actually a Friday, the next working day after that would be the fifth. Likewise, if we add 15, the next working day, 15 days later, would be the 23rd and that's skipping all the weekend dates and holidays between now and then. These functions are so powerful because we've defined them in one place and we can call them anywhere in our app. 
Just a quick plug before we continue on, if you have a Power Apps issue that you're stuck on and want some one-on-one -on -one time to work through it together, check out the Mentoring Channel Membership or the standalone mentoring options linked in the description of this video. That's where we can meet virtually and work through problems exactly like this one. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that I would show you how to update these formulas to define your own working days from the week, recognizing that you may have other working and non-working days through the week, such as Saturday and Sunday being working days. Right now, all three formulas hard code this assumption. So to make this more configurable, we want to move from excluding days to explicitly defining which weekdays are allowed. And that's what we'll look at next. We'll head back to our formulas and we'll add a new formula called FX working weekdays. We can simply define this as an array as the numbers of each week that we want to include as working days. If Monday is the assumed starting date of the week, then we could say maybe we only have working days as Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now in our formulas, instead of comparing the weekday value being less than or equal to five, we can compare the weekday value being in our working weekdays formula. If the weekday is found in this array, then it will be counted as a workday. In this case, we've made this change on our first working days function, so let's go try that out. Right now for January, our first working day of the month would actually be Saturday, since Thursday and Friday, which would be days four and five, are not included in our working weekdays formula. Likewise, if we look at the month of February, Sunday being the first is actually a working day. So if we select a date in February, that gets counted as the first working day of the month. So if you have the need for this customizability, you can copy this part of the formula to the other two functions. And now those will also count that array as the working days. So that's the full pattern, not just for weekends, not just for holidays, but for any working calendar you need to support in Power Apps. What I like about this approach is that we're not really hard coding any assumptions here. We're defining rules, generating dates, and filtering them to let our formulas do the work. In this example, we've defined some things in our app formulas, but those could also be stored in data sources to make them even more customizable and make them easier to change without having to republish your app. If you take this a step further, you could even use this inside of a component or even integrate this into some sort of calendar utility. If this was helpful, let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.